Hello, I am whoops. Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Renarb Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about the comic books I've read, the Kickstarters I've backed, and where you can find these comics and Kickstarters and uh, anything else cool that I get, uh, things like that. Anyway, let's start off with a comic I read digitally. It is called Rex Bradley, Boy Adventurer. Check that one out. That's on my phone. So, Rex Bradley, Boy Adventurer is. Let me get, head to the credits page. That's the credits page. I love it too because it has all the Twitter and Instagram handles on it. That's a good way to do credits pages in my opinion. And uh, so let's start off with writer and colorist is Winston Gambro. And this one has four stories. If you see, check it out there. It's got four stories. So it's got four different sets of uh, pencils and inks by Leandro. Panganaben on one of them and Pencils and Inks by Christine Hip on the other story. On the third story is Paul Williams, Pencils and Inks, and Pencils and Inks by Jay Pollock on the uh, fourth story in this one. This is Ray Bradley issue one here and uh, so Ray Bradley is a kid or Rex Bradley sorry Rex Bradley is a kid of two divorced parents and and he spends equal time at each of their uh, jobs his dad stays on an island that uh, has dinosaurs all over it and he is protecting the world from a guy that controls dinosaurs and wants to destroy the world Rex's mom lives in Japan building mechs that uh, protect the world and mainly Japan from uh, kaijus that come up out of the ocean and uh, so Rex Bradley boy adventurer books are yeah let's see here so yeah there's there's a page right there with uh, one of the kaijus it looks like a giant snapping turtle that is freaking awesome as you can see there's a tiny ship in that picture too so yeah it is freaking huge and uh, I love snapping turtles myself so that was pretty cool to see one in this book. So Rex Bradley is, uh, they're very kid friendly books and uh, they're books that I would completely see uh, welcome and at home in a uh, school book fair. They're that kind of book like My Johnny and Jack kind of uh, books they would read. And um, yeah, and as I said uh, in Issue one, Rex stops a giant snapping turtle by uh, helping his mom use the the mech to uh, catapult it into space. And he stops a bunch of thieves. Let me, oh yeah. And then there's also, there's the cover to Rex Bradley issue two, which it has credits by writer and colorist is Winston Gambro. Pencils and Inks in one of the stories by Winston Gambro. Pencils and Inks by Nico Gambro in another story. And Pencils and Inks by Sebastian Sala in the third story. And Pencils and Inks by Rachel Distler. Distler Red Tear Bear. Red Tie Bear in uh, another one. So that's another one of those title pages that uses all the. Uh, social media handles on it. Pretty cool stuff. Oh. So, yeah, there there's one story where uh, Rex stops a bunch of thieves from stealing tech from his mom's uh, science place, lab. And she He stops these thieves by uh, knocking out one of them and dressing up in his suit and uh, fox mask. It's pretty cool. Uh, really funny way of stopping the thieves. And, uh, yeah, and then uh, there were some mole men in one story, a trip to space with an intelligent gorilla. And yeah, like I said, these two books were really fun. Um, I didn't have time to uh, read them to my boys because uh, it's been a crazy last or last second to the last week of school. So, you know, we got all those activities and graduations and stuff like that coming up. And uh, yeah, but uh, I plan on... 
uh, reading this, these issues to uh, Jack and Johnny, seeing what they think. Letting Johnny read them, because he can read, he's at that age. Pretty cool stuff. Um, yeah, check out Rex Bradley. I will show, I will throw up links to Rex Bradley in uh, the Twitter page, in the Twitter of uh, where I post this, and all sorts of fun stuff like that. So yeah, Rex Bradley, issues one and two, they were an awesome read. Like I said, uh, these really should be on the shelves at a book fair. And, uh, yeah, maybe one day I'll see them on the shelves at the Scholastic Book Fair. That'd be awesome. So, next up on my list that I've read is Planer Jane. Check this out. I came with, came with two posters. They're identical, though. Uh, two posters of Planer Jane here. And, uh, and it also came with uh, a lot of, a lot of postcards. There's a Planer Jane sketch card, sketches, and uh, there's one that's very red. That'll be cool. I've got blank spaces on this wall that I need to fill up with cards, so these will come in really handy. Oh yeah, and there's one. That's the uh, publisher, Broken Face Comics, that makes these comics. So yeah, that'll be really cool up there. And it came with stickers. Planer Jane sticker and a broken face sticker. So, yeah, as you know, I put these stickers on my um, comic book boxes, so that'll be really cool to throw, slap onto those to go along with the, uh, the books. So one thing that I found confusing on these, this is Planer Jane issue one, and this is Planer Jane issue two, and it, it took me a long time to figure out which one was one and when, which one is two. It says it on the inside cover, but very, very, very tiny right there. It says issue one on some comics that she has on her shelf. And then very, 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 very tiny again. Right there on the desk, it says no two. So that's how they just distinguish uh, which issue is one and two on these. Um, it was a funny way to do it, but very confusing. Took a while to figure that one out. So, let's see. Let's start here with issue one. Alright. So, Planer Jane is a modern day story of murder and uh, a darkly comic story of Jane Pearson, who is a seemingly ordinary teenage girl, a plain Jane, who becomes a brutally efficient killer. The whole series is planning on being a 150 pages that is going to be broke up into issues like this. And it is entirely colored in uh, is black, white, and red here and there. So, uh, yeah, that was a pretty cool way to do it. I liked it. I like how they did that. And, uh, yeah, let's see here. Find my notes. So, Planer Jane issue one here is... Basically just her going to school, explaining who she is and why why she is the way she is, stuff like that. Really cool artwork as you can see from uh, from what I'm showing you here. Let me oh I I didn't read the credits yet, have I? Okay, let me get to the credits here. So the credits for Planer Jane is written by David Wilburn. Sequential artist is Wayne Loudon Loudon. And the cover artist is Ralph Seam. And the colorist is Robert Last, and the logos and lettering are by Tim West, which that is a pretty cool logo if you check that one out. So, yeah, uh, as I said, in issue one on the cover is hidden, um, the issue, number one, is hidden on that cover, like I showed you. And uh, the artwork is pretty cool inside. I'm loving the way they, they do that. You have red balloons when, uh, whenever Jane's thinking. And, uh, yeah, this is how she starts off being a killer. Is I think there's even mention of a job fair. And uh, her friend is thinking about being a nurse. But she decides that she's going to be a killer for hire. And uh, does everything she can to figure out how to make that lifestyle her new thing. And, um, yeah, let's see. And there's a thank you page in issue one here for the uh, K 
Kickstarter backers. I, I didn't jump on board till issue two though, so I'm not in that one. And uh, let's see here. And I also noticed too that uh, the, the broken face logo, whoops, I lost my notes. The broken face logo pops up in uh, inside the book on t-shirts and uh, soda cans, things like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it continues on being black, white, white and black, and uh, black and white and red in places. I don't see any, oh there's some red. She gets bit by a dog in that one. And uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, she kills her first uh, human in this one, and it's a it's a uh, person that's cheating with the person's wife, something like that. And uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. I enjoyed the story, and uh, I plan on back in issue three. I think I might already be back in issue three on the Kickstarter, so I'll have to check that one out. And uh, yep. So that's Planer Jane. It also has a uh, thank you page, which I did not make it onto it because it did a thing where it highlighted the super backers, and I was just a regular backer, I guess, so I'm not on the thank you page. But overall, it was a cool issue, and yeah, I am there for issue three. Uh, I'm pretty excited about seeing where the story goes. Um, I think it's going to be broken up into six or eight books so who knows how long this story is gonna go but yeah I'm, I'm excited about it I thought it was pretty cool Planer Jane oh yeah it even came with some uh, pins those little uh, safety pin ones that you stick on your coat pretty cool stuff um, yeah so Planer Jane uh, when I get to the Kickstarter news I will talk about Planer Jane number three being on Kickstarter and um, yeah on to the next book uh, the next book that I have for you is called Operation Eclipse. This is issue one. I got issue one and two through the same Kickstarter. And uh, Operation Eclipse number one here is written by creator and writer is Ray Merrick the third, illustrated by Ruli Akbar, colors by Avery. Ferdinand, and lettered by Francisco Zamora. So, uh, Operation Eclipse is your it's your standard uh, comic book hero vigilante thing where uh, he's just a normal guy in suits and he goes in sword fights and stuff with people. His he goes by the code name Eclipse. So in this, Eclipse is the code name of the hero. And uh, let's see here. It is about a mayor that gets kidnapped by a supervillain named Shiver. And the mayor actually hired Shiver to, uh, to kill the hero Eclipse. And it backfired on him and the uh, supervillain was going to kill the mayor. And it, it didn't matter either way to uh, Eclipse. He, someone was in need of saving and he saves the mayor. But when he gets to the warehouse, there are three assassins there by the names of Edge, Quiver, and Recoil, the assassins that Shiver also hired to uh, assist him in this little ambush of getting Eclipse there. And uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed the story. Um, I thought the artwork was really cool. I noticed one thing when they're fighting, that uh, all of the panels are, the panel lines are kind of askew and it, kind of adds a really dynamic action to uh, the fighting to do it that way I thought it was pretty cool and uh, I really enjoyed the uh, the colorist on this too the colorist did a fantastic job really good writing really good art and uh, overall pretty good stories had some back back matter of uh, l little cards files about how who each character was and stuff like that and uh, yes, this one has a thank you page as well, where I didn't uh, discover it until the second issue. There's no way my name's on that one. That is a lot of backers though, that's pretty cool. And so yeah, that was Operation Eclipse number one. Now I'm going to move on to Operation Eclipse, which 
same thing. Uh, well, let's see, we got the same writer. The whole art team is the same. Creator writer, Ray Merrick III, illustrated by Ruli Akbar, colors by Avery Ferdinand, and letters by Francisco Zamora. So the story continues pretty much right on where uh, we left off. This all takes place in St. Louis, by the way. And uh, so in the first scene here, we've got our hero fighting a bunch of uh, muggers who were actually paid by a guy named Aperture to uh, to stage a fight because Aperture, I guess his whole thing is he likes to take pictures of people doing things. And so, I guess that, I don't know. It's got that goofy comic bookness to it that where uh, just random things happen and uh, it's just supposed to be, that's how it is. Anyway, and it looks like he's got a little team, kind of a Magnum PI thing where he's got the guy that flies helicopters and stuff. And, oh yeah, both co both of my covers are signed too. Uh, I don't know if you can see the gold signature on top of Eclipse there. But that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. So yeah, just like the first issue, um, I really enjoyed how, they, how the panels are askew and uh, the layouts. And I noticed all the gutters are in black too. That's a pretty cool way to do it. Adds a gritty kind of darkness to it. And the yeah the art style and the coloring is amazing on par with the second with the first issue just keeps getting better. They're one of those teams that that are doing a great job growing as an art team and writing team together. So I'm I'm really enjoying that. And uh, this one as well has a Kickstarter running for issue three. And as of right now, I am not backing it. But as soon as this video is over, I'm going to jump onto the Kickstarters, make sure I'm backing it. And my name did end up on this uh, thank you page. My full name that I like to be called on Kickstarter is Gary Brantner of Rentnarb Studios Comics. It's all right there in white. Pretty cool. I'm loving it. So yeah, uh, when I get to the Kickstarter news, I will tell you where you can find Eclipse number three. Uh, Operation Eclipse number three. Um, oh yeah, and this one even came with a sticker. Where'd my sticker go? Ah, I lost it. Somewhere there is a sticker that says Eclipse on it, Operation Eclipse, and uh, that will obviously go, it looks just like that, but it will go, oh, here we go. There's my sticker for Eclipse, and that will go on my comic book box so that I know which box I've put Eclipse in. And, uh, yeah. So that's the, uh, the end of my reviews for now. Now we will move on to my mailbox. What have I got in the mailbox this week? Oh man, I got some good stuff. I got a set of four pins here from, uh, let's see, who are my pins from? My pins are from Tim Seeley. This one is a Hack Slash pin. It has the title for Hack Slash. It is a comic book that I recently reviewed. And here's a pin of Igor, I think is his name. He's a Frankenstein looking guy that likes to wear a gas mask. Then there's a bat that says kiss it. It's got nails in it. Good zombie fighting bat. And there is Cassie Hack right there, the main character of Hack Slash. So pretty good handful of pins here. I'm loving them. And uh, yeah, as you know, I collect pins. So that was a pretty good way to back the uh, Kickstarter with where I already had the uh, uh, Hack Slash Omnibus. This was the best way I could see back in it. Instead of getting on the bus twice, I got the pins. A set of four of them. Really good looking stuff though. I like how, I like how dark they are. And next up, I got a big old package of comics from uh, Pat Shand. I got Destiny New York Volume 4. Can't wait to throw that into the read pile. Uh, because I like Destiny New York so much, I might bump it up in the uh, read pile and read it sooner. We'll see. And uh, I got Destiny New York issue one, which I think that was a throw in that he did because uh, he felt bad for the lateness of all the issues. So that one's cool. Uh, Black Mask is now reprinting each of the 
Destiny New York's in single issues, so that's pretty cool. Um, there's a bookmark right there, or is that a sticker? I don't know. And that sticker is from Prison Witch, which I backed. Also, I backed uh, Destiny New York, and I de backed uh, Prison Witch issue two, volume two, and so I got volume one and two in the same package. And uh, I can't wait to read those um, because I'm, I'm one of those where I've discovered that I like Pashan's books, and so if his name is on it, I'm probably in there too, uh, jumping on board, reading it. Because, uh, yeah, pretty cool stuff. I've got a bunch of other Pat Shan stuff that should be coming in the mail soon. Um, Smokeweed See the Future just barely ended on Kickstarter, so I won't be getting that very soon. But, um, let's see, uh, Vampire Emmy and the Garbage Girl should be coming to me. And what else have I back? There's quite a bit of things coming. Um, yeah. So that's what I got in the mail recently. Now... I will move on to the Kickstarter corner, campaign corner, actually, because some of these are Indiegogos. Campaign corner of my show where I talk about the Kickstarters you should know about, and I will throw the, all the links up to these ones that I mentioned on uh, my Twitter page, and so that when I post the uh, video here, you'll, you'll see all the Kickstarters underneath it. All right, so first up is one called Cypher Team. IO2. Uh, Cypher Team IO1 actually has not got to me in the mail yet. And uh, so I was like, what the heck? You guys are running a Kickstarter before people even have the first issue. And uh, immediately after I commented that to them, uh, I noticed it got canceled on Kickstarter. So hopefully I get the issue one in time and read it. And then I see uh, Cypher Team issue two going up on Kickstarter, and then that way I know what I'm backing. So, I just thought I'd point this one out, even though it got cancelled. I, I thought that it would be, uh, yeah, just a good learning point for some of you out there. If, if you're going to run a Kickstarter, make sure you, your customers have the issue in hand before you start running the second one. And, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I don't know anything. Okay, let's see. Infinity Agents, I think that one just ended. And Miskatonic High, that one just ended as well because I just did the uh, uh, survey. So, here's one that's ending tomorrow. You better check it out quick and while you can. It's called Anui Nui Warriors. Anui Nui Warriors. It is a Hawaiian word because this is a Hawaiian comic book. Hawaiian heroes uh, from... This is from the people that brought you Sister Shark and... Uh, Amakua Warriors. So check out Anui Nui Warriors on Kickstarter right now. Hawaii is center stage in an epic one-shot, an origin story of the Mana Universe, which introduces a cosmic ohana sent to battle the dark darkness of Earth. Uh, so this is Mana Comics uh, Universe, and they've been doing comic books since 2014. So they're pretty cool. They do some awesome stuff. This is going to be a 32-page uh, comic book when it's finally done. So check it out. Anui Nui Warriors on Kickstarter right now until tomorrow. So go on there right now and back it. If you uh, have trouble spelling it, just go to my Twitter page and uh, you'll find the link underneath this video. Anui Nui Warriors ends May 8, 28th. Quicksand number one ends tomorrow also. Quicksand number one is the first of a new and exciting 22-page full-color sci-fi horror comic book series. So, a mysterious hole forms in the Egyptian desert, and a bunch of horrific creatures come pouring out of it, killing the people that are nearby, and then those creatures go back into the hole. And so, all of the nations decide to uh, create a team called Canary One to explore this hole. They send scientists and soldiers and whatever into this team, into this hole to find out where these creatures came from, if they're going to come back, who knows what's going on. But this team never returns, which is really bad because some of the, these team members have families and, uh, you know, like, like you do. And so 
this is the story about this hole, the team, the canary one that we send in there, and what happens to them. So check out, oh, what do we got? Check out quicksand number one on Kickstarter right now until May 28th. Whoa, dropped my notes. Okay, Fever Volume 1 is on Kickstarter right now. Fever Volume 1 is an ongoing graphic novel tale of loss and revenge set against the cyberpunk American megacity. Uh, a hitman leaves the life to settle down with the daughter of his former treacherous crime boss, crime boss, and his new bride is murdered on the honeymoon, and he embarks on a war against the entire criminal underworld. The art is real, really crazy kinetic. Uh, it takes place in 2082, and it is a 120-page hardcover graphic novel. Sounds really cool. Fever Volume 1 is on Kickstarter until May 28th. Pneumatic Cases 1 through 3 is on Kickstarter right now. A sleuthing steampunk spouses story. Uh, the third issue is a steampunk mystery comic series. A story of dedication, seduction, death, and pistons. Lord and Lady Ravencroft are two brilliant scientists and inventors whose bohemian lifestyle and inventive ways are in direct contrast to the staid and proper ways of Victorian England. Check out this 22-page comic book with a cover by Kaylin Smith on it. It has stickers available. Uh, Pneumatic Cases 1 through 3 is available on Kickstarter right now until May 30th. Alex Automatic Volume 1 is on Kickstarter right now. It is Alex is driven mad by illegal government experiences experiments. A young agent believes that he is a robot super spy hero of a 70s TV show, Alex Automatic. It is a 220 page volume with Kirby-esque, Darwin Cook, Steve Ditko style art to it. Um, I really love it. I, and uh, it's one that I've been keeping my eye on a lot whenever there was past uh, Alex Automatic Kickstarters and I didn't have the funds at the time, but now there's volume one out, and I am not going to miss it this time. I'm backing it. I am getting it. 220 pages. How can you not? As soon as you check out the art, you'll love it. You'll want it. Check out Alex Automatic Volume 1 on Kickstarter until May 30th. Glenn in Monsterland is on Indiegogo right now. Um, it is a 48 pages of all ages fun. It's comedy, adventure, about a gang of monsters who rebel against their evil masters. Glynn is an apprentice witch left in a dungeon to rot, and she escapes with the help of all these monsters. It'll be 52 pages after extras. So check that out. Uh, from the... Uh, oh, man. From the preview pages that were posted on the Indiegogo campaign, I got the sense that this was a lot of fun. It looked like a Saturday morning cartoon. And I'm in. I love it. I like the way they're doing it. And check out Glenn in Monsterland on Kickstarter, right on Indiegogo, right now, until I don't know when it ends because I don't know how Indiegogo works. But it is still on Indiegogo, maybe. LaFay, uh, let's see, no, LaFay number five is on Kickstarter right now. Um, as you know, I just recently reviewed issue four in the last video and uh, I love it. I can't get enough of LeFay. Uh, it's a really cool story line. It's like if you were a fan of the uh, oh man I can't remember what it's called Jessica Jones. Yeah if you were a fan of Jessica Jones and you like that show this is basically Jessica Jones but if she was a fairy with magical powers and uh, Everyone around her is from the fairy world. There are witches, and Merlin is there. Merlin's a bad dude. You gotta watch out for him. And, uh, yeah, there's griffins and dragons and pegasus. All sorts of cool stuff. And she's followed around by a, a little leprechaun guy. So that's pretty cool. Um, the art style is crazy good. Um, let's see, who does the art on this one? Oh, I don't think I wrote that down. Anyway... Um, 
Lafay number five is on Kickstarter right now until June 2nd. Section seven is on Kickstarter right now. Section, section seven, Cases of the Strange and Unnatural. Explore a collection of cases, case files, that are based on the experiences of detectives and that encounter this, the unexplained. It is a 164 page perfect bound graphic novel with a sketchy loose art style, I, which I, I love that. I like sketchiness and I like the loose. Well, I like all art styles. Um, cartoony and clean and perfect art styles. It doesn't matter. As long as it fits the story, in my opinion. Anyway, so yeah, if you like X-Files and uh, things like that, this is a cool looking story. 164 pages. I mean, that's freaking awesome. So check out Section 7, Cases of the Strange and Unnatural, on Kickstarter until June 3rd. Uh, Starlight, Issues 1 through 3, are on Kickstarter right now. That's another one that uh, I reviewed Issue 2 in the last video. Starlight is about a raver superhero trapped in space. Um, there are these two kids. They were kid superheroes a long time ago, and they were forced into retirement. Something happened, and their parents made them hide and go back to normal life, go to school. Ow. All sorts of stuff like that. Sorry about that. I'm getting old. Um, it is a 24-page comic book about trans-dimensional spider wizards, space pirate cats, and has-been superheroes, and a YouTube report reporter guy that follows them around and ends up stuck in space with them. Um, yeah, so uh, it's good stuff. Starlight, I love the art style. It's uh, very graffiti looking and uh, trippy. So check out Starlight 1 through 3 on Kickstarter till June 3rd. Damsel from Distress number 1 through 3 is on Kickstarter right now. The smash hit comic book series uh, continues. A hotshot secret agent battles the ghosts of her past. It's D&D &D meets the man from UNCLE. James Bond, Charlie's Angels, and Zelda all in a blender. Two issues at the same time right now. I think. Yeah. I'm not sure how what's going on. I'm pretty sure I saw just issue 1 on Kickstarter a while ago. Now there's issue 1, 2, and 3 on Kickstarter right now. So there are 48 pages of comic books. Uh, 48 pages in each book. And uh, yeah, it looks really cool. If you're into that D&D, &D, Zelda kind of stuff, Check out Damsel from Distress 1 through 3. 1 through 3 on Kickstarter right now until June 3rd. 5th. Until June 5th, sorry. Yeah, getting really tongue tied in the last end of this. Cuddles, a last chance crime story of an oversized crime one shot from the creative team behind Transmissions. It is 32 pages, 44 after the bonus content. Wow, that's a big book. It has a great art style. I love love it. And uh, Cuddle's life ain't too difficult. He's got a cushy job collecting money for a local crime boss. But he's partnered with the boss's son. And things go sideways. So check out Cuddle's right now on Kickstarter until June 6th. The Axeman Collected Edition is on Kickstarter right now. An operative hunts patient zeros to eradicate dangerous new diseases before the plagues start. Imagine that, because uh, pandemics suck, right? Uh, yeah, I just barely got my vaccine, and uh, ooh, my arm freaking hurts. Just in one little inch there, though. But anyway, other than that, it's fine. Get your vaccines. So uh, this is 105 pages. It has a rad art style and lots of previews on the Kickstarter. Check that one out. The Axeman is on Kickstarter right now until June 10th. Oh yeah, and as I see, this is from Plastic Sword, Sword Press, uh, which um, I backed one called Super Scouts from them before. Love that art style. I think this is the same art style. And uh, yeah, check out Axeman Collected Edition on Kickstarter right now until June 10th. 
Cult Heroes, number two is on Kickstarter. Oh man, I really loved Cult Heroes number one. That's one I reviewed in the last episode, last video I made. And uh, yeah, I, I love his art style, really skittish. The way he colors it is amazing. Um, check out the uh, preview pages on this Cult Heroes Kickstarter and you'll see what I mean. I mean, I'm like, there. it's an insane way of coloring a comic book and uh, yeah, I wish I was half that good. So, check it out. It's about, it's a comic book about a, there are two people and they're walking, they're going around the whole country killing the superheroes. And uh, I don't know why yet. We'll get to that at the end of the story. We'll see. It is a 24 page comic book, mature readers only. And Cult Heroes, number two, is on Kickstarter right now till June 11th. Check it out. The Deadliest Bouquet is on Kickstarter right now. In 1998, three estranged sisters, trained by their Nazi hunting mother, come together to solve their mother's murder. It's a Carola, Carola Borelli is the artist on it. Awesome stuff. I love what she does. Uh, Destiny New York and Love University are some of the things she's drawn. And uh, they're both comic books that I'm loving. And uh, so I can't wait to see more of her art in Deadliest Bouquet. It is a 120-page comic book, too, so that's awesome. Uh, check out The Deadliest Bouquet on Kickstarter right now until June 15th. There are even stickers uh, involved, which, as you know, I'm a big fan of stickers. And did I already say Deadliest Bouquet on Kickstarter until June 15th? Well, I did again. Lethal Challengers Cat Number 1 is on Indiegogo right now. It is a new sci-fi project from the writers of Le Fay and Babylon Working. Bounty, bounty hunters Cat and Tusk team up on a bounty that is more trouble than it's worth. Um, so check out Lethal Challengers Cat number one on Indiegogo till who knows when. OBS Vampire Soldat number one is on Kickstarter right now. Uh, this is one that is also drawn by Corolla Borelli, the artist of, uh, what was it, The Deadliest Bouquet. Uh, so she's back with Vampire Soldat number one, OBS. It's, the OBS team is called to investigate a derelict hospital ship infested with bloodthirsty monsters. From this no press, no sleep press, this is the first issue of a two issue set, mature readers only. Check out OBS Vampire Soldat. Number one on Indiegogo until who knows when. Carbon and Silicon and Shangri-La. Two different stories. Carbon and Silicon. Space. Shangri-La. Uh, is uh, by Matthew Bablett. It is two sci-fi tales from the celebrated visionary graphic novelist presented in a gallery quality hardcover slipcase. So Carbon and Silicon is about two androids that crisscross the planet for centuries in search of themselves and each other while civilization is crumbling around them. Shangri-La is about man mankind has abandoned a desolate Earth to live in space and prepare to take the next evolutionary step. Ooh, sounds kind of like Wally. -E. Um, so this one sounds really cool. It is gallery style, 9 by 12. 272 pages hardcover with a slipcase. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. And you ought to check out this art style. It is amazing. Um, so check out Carbon and Silicon and Shangri-La on Kickstarter till June 18th. Operation Eclipse number three. That's the one I just barely reviewed and I am going to go on there right after this video and back it. Operation Eclipse number three is on Kickstarter. Eclipse continues his war on the criminal underworld of St. Louis and gets closer to finding the one responsible for most of the villainy in, the, in his city. I don't know how many pages it is, that's not on the Kickstarter, but it, as of the last time I looked it's almost fully funded. And Operation Eclipse number three is on Kickstarter right now until June 24th. Check that one out. I'm going to back it as soon as I'm done here. Planar Jane 1 through 3 is on Kickstarter right now. I, I'm pretty sure I'm back in this one already. 
but we'll have to check it out. Issues 3 of the Darkly comic story of Jane Pearson, a seemingly ordinary teen who becomes a brutally efficient killer for hire. Uh, this is done in uh, black, white, and red. It is very cool looking. I can't wait to see where this story is going. Check out Planer Jane on Kickstarter. Oh, wait. I don't think this one's on Kickstarter yet. This one's uh, just in the preview stages, but click that notifier button. Make sure you're able to uh, get notified the second it goes live, and you'll see, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I will put the links up for the early notifications on my uh, Twitter. Next up is Deadbeats number two, London Calling. This is a uh, volume of anthology, just random stories about horror and music combined. I have the Deadbeats number one in my read pile. I'm planning on reading it this week, uh, so check that one out. Deadbeats number two, London Calling. It is going to be on Kickstarter soon. Hit that notifier button so you know when it's coming out and you will be notified and back it the day it comes out. So check out Deadbeats number two on Kickstarter or just go to my Twitter and find the link in the show notes of this episode. That looks like that's where I'm at right now. I've been watching Modoc on Hulu. That's a pretty hilarious show. I'm loving it. The voice actors are awesome. It's got... Uh, Oh man, Patton Oswalt is the main guy, Modoc, and uh, the girl from uh, Lucifer and Dexter, the uh, forensic scientist lady. She's on it as his wife. Really funny stuff. Check out Modoc on Hulu. What else have I got going on? Um, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot to tell you about. I told you last week about how I'm going to do Patreon, and so I guess I'll tell you again. So, uh, yeah, I've had a Patreon page for a while, done nothing with it, and uh, now I'm finally going to start doing something with it. Uh, I decided to make tiers on there where you can help me by supporting my work, and uh, what you will get in return is you will get a shout-out on this show, and I will shout you out by name and throw up two of your uh, social media handles along with it. So I'm, I have it in three tiers where uh, it'll be VIP members first. So this is the VIP section of what I'm talking about. And these are just examples. These are not people that are actually backing me as of right now. Uh, so here's an example. Mike Shea is a VIP member. And you can find him on Twitter and Instagram as Miskatonic H and Miskatonic High. So check them out, Mike Shea. And here's an example of how I'm going to do gold members. Gold member example here, not a real example because I haven't got any Patreons yet, but Pat Shand is a gold member. You can find Pat Shand as Pat Shand on Twitter and Pat Shand on in Instagrams. And then I also have Silver Member. Silver Member is, uh, so basically how I'm going to do it is it's going to be $5 for VIP, $3 for gold, and $1 for Silver Members. And this is just $1 a month. Helps me out. Here's my example. Silver Member is Charlie Stickney, who you can follow on Twitter and Instagram as Charlie Stickney or White Ash Comic. And another example here, just to throw that up, is Silver Member Gary Brantner, that's me. You can find me on Twitter as Rentnarb and on Facebook as Rentnarb Studios Comics. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't have anybody following me on Patreon yet, but it would be awesome if I could get some uh, followers on there, someone I could actually shout out on this show. And uh, then you can support me. I will throw up, uh, I will post up uh, progress on my Peter Pan the Vampire issue 4 that I do on there. And I'll post up progress of The Mermaids of Neverland, another comic uh, kind of spin-off that I'm working on. And uh, you will get first looks at that. You will also get the shout-out on this video. And you will be able to watch this on there too. 
Any comments uh, that you make on the Patreon, I will read here with credits to the commenter, commentator. And so uh, that's the end of my show for today. Thank you for watching Renard Studios Comics review some books and tell you about Kickstarters. And until next time, I'm Gary Brantner and signing off.